Yo, what's poppin' guys? So, Minecrush just got a huge nerf, and Ordeal of the Traveler is going to be meta. I wish I was joking, but it's happening, boys. The new Yu-Gi-Oh! rules have came out. A lot of people are giving their feedback, as well as their thoughts on it, and here is mine. So, first off, let me go ahead and go over what these new tournament policies are, and how you can get banned in Yu-Gi-Oh! for really funny things now, that a lot of you guys probably didn't know about, so this is a pretty important video. So, first off, if you guys want to read the full document, I'll have it down below. But basically what it comes down to is in the end section here, it says card hand deck verification. It says with the exception of cards selected by a search effect, you may not search or verify any of your opponent's private knowledge locations such as hand deck contents or face down cards unless you are otherwise directed to do so by a card effect. You also cannot ask a judge to search or verify your opponent's hands, deck contents, or face down cards unless there's a supportable evidence that your opponent may be cheating or there may be a valid deck related issue. And this is actually a pretty big deal with the ordeal of the traveler because you can't just call the judge over to be like, y'all, I just want to make sure that, you know, what I called, uh, I guess, was the incorrect card. So they give a few examples over here, but really what it comes down to is, for example, something like Mind Crush, right? So if you activate Mind Crush and you declare Effect Veiler, he says, ah, oh, I don't have Effect Veiler, okay? You just have to accept that. Whatever card that you activate your Mind Crush and you call, they can just say, nah, bro, I don't got it. They don't have to show you anything. They don't have to show you their hand. And this is a pretty big deal for a deal of a traveler. Uh, if you guys didn't know what that card does, I will get into that in a second. But there is something that at least is a little bit nice so they basically say if you activate like pot of duality and you you know add effect veiler to your hand and then your opponent activates mind crush and they call effect veiler, and then the other guy says i don't have it obviously you know he has it he just added to hand. you can call a judge over and then they can verify at that point but <clears throat> again the judge just normally can't be called unless you have that like backup information and here's where the Yu-Gi-Oh community is kind of split i think in one sense it is like a nerf to mind crush but at the same time there's a lot of cards that technically don't say you have to reveal your entire hand or these other things another excellent example here is a duelist activates effect of mr tomato he basically is trying to search his deck for something he doesn't have a card to spot someone or like let's say like a searcher right his opponent doesn't get to verify this is a huge deal because before your opponent could just see your entire deck which is obviously really really strong to be able to see uh, your opponent's deck that one doesn't come up too often where you're activating the effect of something that's like oh i don't have any search targets for like reinforcement of the army or any of these things right but with ordeal of a traveler let me go ahead and go over the effect of this and i'm gonna explain why this is going to be potentially meta for cheaters we're talking the high iq cheaters back in the day with infernities if you guys didn't know there were so many people that were playing infernities and they were sending monsters in their background just saying i have no hand okay launcher just go off otk and they just win the game and then they just scoop up their cards real quick oh I, you don't get to see my back row uh, because it's just something that, again, it's cheating, but without someone to verify it, um, yeah, you're just going to have to take that fat L, man. But with a deal of a traveler, when your opponent declares an attack, your opponent chooses a random card in your hand, and they call it Monster Spell Trap, and if they call it wrong, the re you have to actually make it so they return their monster to the hand, which is actually really dirty. Now, again, with these new changes, basically... You could always just say, no, you called it wrong. And they can't call over a judge unless, of course, maybe they've gone through Monster Spell Trap and you only have one card. At that point, they can probably call over the judge. But until then, you're not supposed to be able to call over a judge unless you know specifically that they are cheating. That is so insane. I think that what they should have done is made it so you had to reveal, like, a corner of the card. At least, that way they wouldn't see the card's name, but they would know if it's Monster Spell or Trap. Or somehow related to that, because, again... That is just so, so unfair. Ordeal of a Traveler could be meta um, just for the memes, for the sake of the people wanting to cheat. Yo, someone please top a YCS, run triple Ordeal of a Traveler, and whatever your opponent calls, just say, nah, bro, it's wrong. <laughs> That's insane. All right. But like I said, if you guys want to read the full thing, I'll have it down below. But I honestly want to know your guys' opinion on this. Now, hopping into other things that can get you banned, this is actually pretty funny. They actually made a hygiene section of this uh, in the rules. These are in the official PDF file of the tournament policy because those stinky Yu-Gi-Oh players do exist. All right, hold on. I, I bet you I can find how many people also had this issue. If you've actually been to a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament, you know they are smelly players. Drop a like on this video if you know what I'm talking about. I actually think it's hilarious that they added this. 
but it says you are expected to be clean when you enter a tournament. Neglecting to wash or put clean clothes contributes to an unpleasant atmosphere at the event as a tournament can be crowded and the day can be long. Persons who neglect self care to the point that they are negatively impacting the tournament may be asked to correct the issue in order to continue the event. So it's a, it's a new requirement. You gotta main deck that deodorant, but like, it's so true. If you guys have gone to Yu-Gi-Oh event, again, you know what I'm talking about. When like, dude, some of the players, <laughs> they've, they've never seen that card bath. So I guess uh, not useful. Now, this is another interesting thing um, that I just wanted to briefly mention. Um, this was technically in rule set a while back. They, they, they mentioned like, you know, using proxies and other cards. We don't need to get into that. But as far as misprint cards, you must play misprinted cards as if they have the correct information printed on, which that, that's fine. But uh, basically they say that if there is a miscut misprint that's not distinguishable from other cards uh, in the deck while fight face down, um, they are not considered to be tournament legal. So basically you can't use misprinted cards. Now obviously it doesn't come up too often where someone has like a misprinted card and you're trying to argue with them. Um, I know for a long time Absolute Zero had this problem where they were just getting miscutted on the, uh, it was a, a manga promo card. And for the longest time, like, so many of those cards were misprinted. Now, a lot of times if it's in the extra deck, people won't complain, but if it's in the main deck, if they complain, that can be an issue. And I just thought that that was kind of something important to, uh, mention. But in addition to that, this was something that I did not know about because as time goes on, there's the, these new card sleeves that people are using. There's a lot of different brands of card sleeves here. But basically it says you must choose to use plastic sleeves to protect your cards during the course of a tournament. And then it says all sleeves in the main and side decks must be identical in terms of color, wear it, and design. And all cards must be placed in the sleeves in the same direction and manner. I didn't actually realize that, but this can be a pretty big deal, again, if you're trying to stack or if your opponent is trying to stack. But um, you can't double sleeve. This was actually a rule that was in here for a while. But um, I was unaware of this. Sleeves with highly reflective backs are not allowed. And then also sleeves with holographic fronts are not allowed. And sleeves with designs or artwork on the front are not allowed in tournament play. That's so pretty interesting thing to go over but again wine crush dude absolutely destroyed with this but guys our deal the traveler is going to be good now again this is just for real life you if you just play online it doesn't really matter because well there's really no online tournaments that will like really utilize any of these policies because i don't think you're gonna have to smell your opponent online <laughs> but uh, anyways guys like i said if you want to read the full thing i'll have it down below but let me know your thoughts on these changes specifically to anything that would like require you to like if you search for um a card you might not have to reveal it to your opponent if you don't have those uh, again they, they did the example with mystic tomato and in addition to that dude that that's like insanely annoying because i'm sure you guys have played Yu-Gi-Oh. there's a lot of times your opponent will cheat <laughs> let's open up the door or a whole new set of memes man but ordeal of a traveler looking pretty spicy in irl Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see more new Yu-Gi-Oh! content as well as Yu-Gi-Oh! rules, I'll do the Tower Traveler. Make it matter, boys! Thanks for watching, and peace!